gentlemen, get ready to be shocked, amazed, and surprised by one of the greatest, unforeseen, unforeseeable, mind-bending twists in all of cinematic history. And that twist will be revealed here tonight. Hold on to your fucking hats, folks, because here it comes. The twist to end all twists is that Adam fucking hated Taurus Trap. Let's talk <laughs> about it on Horror Movie Night. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. Oh, man. You're in good company, though, Brian, because two other people on this show fucking love this movie. Yeah, listen, okay, I'll be the outlier great. here. I'm, I'm always the fucking outlier in these <laughs> goddamn movies. But uh, Scott was actually, we were messaging the other day, and he made the joke. He was like, can we just call this Adam Hates Movies? Should we just change the name of it? I was like, no, 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 no. That's inaccurate. What we should change this to is Adam Hates Tourist Trap, because this movie's fucking retarded. Like, this is really, I don't know what you guys were, po- like, this is real. so best built up ever. for me. <laughs> Seriously, this one is the have, best movie ever. <laughs> I would rather have hot wax cover my ears, nose, and mouth <laughs> and fucking watch this shit. It was plaster of Paris, by the way. <laughs> yeah, get it right or pay the price. Don't um, break my balls, why don't you? Come on, <laughs> well, I'll start off right away by saying that I actually think Tourist Trap has one of my favorite openings to any horror movie. You mean that goofy-ass music that doesn't fit at all? No, no, not... No, I mean like the actual sequence where the character, who I believe his name is Woody... Is, um, it is it is uh being attacked by all like the mannequins just keep screaming and laughing at him and it's just such a weird little scene i love it and there's part of also, me that that's that's honestly still creepy i'm an adult i am absolutely an adult and that scene is still creepy to me no yeah. the closet scene is a legit jump scare like <laughs> it actually works you know when that smiling one pops out <laughs> it's not the smiling one that really gets me it's one that busts through the window and then it turns and goes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of heads screaming in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. I love it. Oh, good. I actually have a theory on that scene that I just developed this morning while watching this. <laughs> okay. What? What is it? Oh, I don't know if you've ever heard the uh, interview with Sam Raimi where he talked about when he made uh, Evil Dead. He didn't really know anything about horror movies. Okay. So he like spent a week watching horror movies before they worked on Evil Dead. Have you ever okay. heard this before? No. Okay, so Evil Dead came out in what, 1981, I think? Yeah. You think he yeah. watched Taurus Trap? <laughs> I think so. It, this would have this came out in 1979. If you rewatch that opening scene and think about the scene where Bruce goes crazy in Evil Dead 2, it's kind of similar. Like it's, there's even a flashing light bulb that's kind of moving and just stuff yeah. like crazy. Well, as um, you know, we also think that Sam Raimi Sam ripped Raimi's off House. Yeah, he ripped <laughs> yeah, off we, House. We've developed our own theory over here. <laughs> okay, okay. If you watch House, and keep in mind that that movie came out two years before Evil Dead 2. Well, this did. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, wow, there's a lot of scenes that Sam Raimi borrowed from House. Lovingly. Um, lovingly, lovingly yes. It's Love probably it. one of his fa- This and Taurus Trap are probably his favorite horror movies. Um, well, he has good taste then. So I. I love that there's this whole creepy build to the to the Woody scene where it's like there's fucking knives flying at him and he gets killed by a lead pipe. And I and I love the absurdity of like the lead pipe shoots into him and then it like you just hear the drip 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 drip, drip and it pans and just like the blood is slowly funneling out of him through this pipe. That might have been the first time that's ever been used. I can't think of a movie that did that earlier. Yeah. This movie is ahead of its time. Is yes. for sure. <laughs> also, for better, it is for way worse. more obscure than it should be. Like it yeah. is way too much fun to be as unknown as it is. Yeah, it feels like it came back into the limelight here in the past, like five years, maybe. Uh, Some, so somebody picked it when we were discuss- when we were still discussing as um, Reddit Horror Club. Somebody picked okay. it, and that was the first time I'd ever even heard of it. It's that obscure that, like me, the guy who went looking for like every horror movie ever, um, had never even heard of it, much less seen it. And I was like, oh, this looks like crap because I don't really like movies with mannequins that, that they don't really creep me out. I mean, at least this is what I thought before I saw it. And then I watch it and I'm like, man, this movie's awesome. I, I had such a good time watching it the first time. And that was, I don't know, two years ago. And we and, never uh, got to record an actual episode yeah, because my copy didn't come in the mail. I had ordered – I had bought the DVD and it got like caught up in the shipping and didn't show up until like two weeks after the discussion. <laughs> we meet – Becky, Jerry, and Molly, who are friends of Woody, and they find Woody's girlfriend, Elaine, 
strand it because they were having car issues, which is why Woody ended up in the little shack with the mannequins. So they also start to have car issues and decide to go skinny dipping in a nearby lake. That's when they're approached by an old man named Slauson who runs the old, like, gas station touristy trap area. And for those of you who are impressed that I almost spelled his, uh, pronounced his name correctly, it is because I had it sound spelled on the laptop because I knew <laughs> that if I looked at the spelling of this name, there was no way I was going to say it right. <laughs> Even though she screams his name like a thousand fucking times in the last ten. That's why Adam hates this movie. He hates people screaming names over and over again. <laughs> But it doesn't no, have any I children love- in it, so he doesn't have a leg to stand on here. Yeah, no. no, 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 no. These 40-year-olds are clearly people- college kids. <laughs> 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 well, I don't dislike when people scream names over and over again, just only if that name is Carol Ann. Okay. Then I'm okay. Carol Ann! <laughs> Carol Ann! Uh, so there's that creepy scene where the the farmer, Vincent Fritters, fucking comes up. <laughs> and um, he watched oh this, all of them skinny dip. He's just chatting with them like it's nothing. <laughs> uh, how about you? How about you, little lady? You look like you're having fun. <gasps> 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 Get the fuck out of there! What the <laughs> so you admit there was a creepy scene? <laughs> a lot of a lot of history in that there, like Adam's impression of Lawson is the best thing that's happened since House Suit. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was Slauson with an S. It's, it's Slauson, like coleslaw oh, and sin. Who cares? <laughs> who fucking cares? Look, so old man lossages. Old man sausages. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Slauson's like, hey, I know I've been creeping over here, but uh, you want to just spend the night at my place while I fix your car? And everyone's like, yeah, sure, that works. Oh, you got a whole house dedicated to mannequins and your dead wife? Yeah, that's not weird. Let's keep going. Hey, let's hang out. That sounds good. That's <laughs> like, and he's like, just don't ever leave this room and you'll be fine, which sounds like a suggestive kidnapping. He's like, look, I'm not saying I kidnapped you. I'm just saying you're not allowed to leave. Fucking that bitch Elaine decides to leave anyway. Yeah, uh, she is the dumbest. And it's totally OK that she dies because she's like the, the trope of like the stupid person who's like, I gotta, I gotta look at stuff. Nah, I'm, if I die, come get me. You know, like whatever. You're, you suck. But let me just say, I have to start this off by mentioning that uh um hey adam have i ever said how much i love this film let's backtrack to the swimming hole we didn't bring our bathing suits says the girl wearing a bathing suit <laughs> was that a bathing suit it, oh come on it looks like a bathing suit or it, it looks like look you know like, a, like a top of a leotard or something anyway well, something else i noticed in that scene is they just met this girl and she's, like, telling the Molly character, like, hey, just live for once in your life, Molly. Like, they're talking like they've known each other forever. Yeah, that's real confusing for me. Also, let's just get this all out there there as well. Molly is obvious from, like, the get-go going to be the Survivor Girl because she's all, like, meek and, and she doesn't want to, like, take her clothes off and all those stupid tropes that are supposed to be a Survivor Girl. But I really wanted Becky to be the Survivor Girl. I actually thought the first time I watched it, I was like, Becky's gonna kick some ass. She's gonna make it out. It's gonna be awesome. And and this you mean tube be top? Like, yes, tube top. Uh, Wonder Woman. Right. Uh, what are your guys' stances on tube tops? By the way, uh, they com- work really well for Becky. That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've been down at the the local bus terminal and saw a couple that don't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're not you. You haven't lived until you've been to the county fair. <laughs> the pregnant women. Uh, yeah. Tube yeah. Tops. yeah. Um, I know that that's not just an Ohio thing. That has to be up there in the uh, great white Well, North. you have an inordinate amount of juggalos in your state, so that's probably... Dude, I live right by the gathering. Have I mentioned that before? <laughs> so I wanted Becky, the like the strong-willed woman, to be the survivor girl. This is Valentine all over again, which was just a couple weeks ago. So, man, I, I'm just betting on the wrong horses. I'm like Adam last week. So Elaine goes into this room, and she is approached by a man wearing a mannequin mask that kind of looks similar to Woody's. Well, no, face. he's wearing Woody's hat. Yeah, and then she is killed when her scarf starts choking her. Which Not is her ki- scarf. It's the scarf that she stole, which means that she deserved to die. Yep, there you go, yes. So she's choked to death by a scarf. And that's kind of like, this is when you start to realize more so than even in that first scene, like, well, wow, there's not going to be a whole lot of people actually stabbing each other in this movie. This is going to be like Carrie meets the Texas Chainsaw well, Massacre. Well, the thing is, is that I did not, the first time I saw this, I thought that the, that, for, that room was booby-trapped at the beginning. I thought yeah, that like everything was booby-trapped. Yeah. yeah, like, 
that this guy was so lonely and desperate that he was like, you know what? I'm just going to booby trap all these things and kill anybody that comes through for shits and giggles. But no, well, and they made a point. Tell- they made a point yeah, to show he can do like robots and stuff. So yeah, that, I, I think, think they the should have blurred films- those lines more. But then it obviously becomes telepathy. You know, <laughs> no, it's telekinesis. Quick, get quick. it right. Um, oh, telekinesis. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I, you know, I really like the fact that it's telekinesis because it shows that Carrie was such a big movie that they there the guy was like, you know, I, I could have it mechanical. I could have this guy just be a normal Joe. Fuck that. I don't want it to be telekinesis. <laughs> Carrie was such a gem of a film. But I actually really like it because it makes this movie such a weird anachronism in the first wave of slasher flicks. Because it, it's it's for all intents and purposes, if you were to put a knife in his hand instead of giving him crazy brain, like he would be just a regular slasher. I don't think this movie would be nearly as good. Idiosyncrasies are what make it so memorable to me also i think that this movie was written way better than anybody's giving it credit because there there are, the writing is actually really good because there's like um foreshadowing there's the classical writing skills that or you know like screenwriting skills are actually on display in this film like when slawson is talking to them at, at the swimming hole he mentions the like you know water moccasins or whatever poisonous snake it is and that's foreshadowing because when molly is running away from him she's in the water and then there's one of those snakes. I mean, it, it's that. It, I think that they do a really good job of foreshadowing a lot of stuff. It's like that very famous line, like, don't show a shotgun in the first act if, or first scene or, or whatever if you're not going to have it return in the third. So yeah. I don't know. I feel like this movie is actually written way better than it seems when you watch it for the first time. No, I, I don't disagree with that actually at all. So so Becky stumbles into a room filled with mannequins, which is probably my second favorite scene in the movie. I love When they're movie. like sighing yeah well i like that a huge chunk of the soundtrack is just sighs and whispers that are mixed to sound like music like that's kind of cool to me but she stumbles in there and she's attacked by someone wearing a mask that looks kind of similar to elaine and even has the scarf wrapped around her and that's when i started to realize the first time i watched this that this movie is pulling a lot of texas chainsaw massacre like it is oh yeah very much i know there's even a sequence uh later on in the film where the killer is sitting in front of a mirror, like adjusting his top hat and, and stuff, and it's right out of a deleted scene from Texas Chainsaw Massacre where you see Leatherface applying makeup on someone's on one of the faces that he's wearing yeah. for the dinner sequence. So it's definitely I, I really like that that there are these weird homages to just even those early seventies films while but it's they're still- only a couple years old, so it's almost like it's derivative. Yeah. But when we're watching, we're like, oh, it's an homage. Oh, yeah, pretty, yeah. Because <laughs> it, it, it's it's Carrie mixed with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's mostly this movie. The, so- Except Slauson's really fun because he's like, he talks a lot. Yeah. And, he, and he says a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. You like, know why he talk. makes me wear this mask? Cause I'm because so I'm so handsome. handsome. <laughs> like- I, I like when he's like... <laughs> Why don't you like me? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Maybe because the, you're a crazy serial killer. The best scene in this movie, uh, and I'm waiting for Adam to shit all over this scene, but <laughs> when he's having dinner with himself. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, don't you like the soup? Want some crackers? I, I said, <laughs> yes, I, yes, I would like some crackers, please. I want to take the crackers. <laughs> like, it's like, what the uh, fuck? That, 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 that scene looks pretty up. fucking funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta now, if you want me to shit on the scene, let's talk about when he covers that girl's face. <laughs> well, that's where that, that that's that's about that's where we're straight, at. <laughs> that is straight House of Wax, in my opinion. Oh yeah, but yeah. So the masked intruder carries Becky down to the basement where Jerry's tied up, and there's another woman strapped at the table. They believe that the killer is Slauson's <laughs> demented brother, and then yes, the killer begins to cover the girl on the table's face with plaster, cause her to suffocate, so he can make a no, no, no. Mannequin she mask. doesn't suffocate. Oh. Like. Your heart will burst from fright. <laughs> You're not gonna suffocate. Your heart's gonna explode from fright. <laughs> well, actually, you covered all of her face holes, so probably suffocate. That's not going to happen. Well, I think that that was that was fun because that felt very much like a killer, like a Vincent Price moment where he was. You know, a killer, maybe maybe Mask of the Red Death, not Mask of the Red Death. Um, uh, uh, shit, what is it, Lygia? Um, what we're what movie? we're asking Adam is basically for you to repeat that line again, but do it in your Vincent Price voice, and you'll see yeah. how great it is. 
Yes, you're not. You're you're not going to suffocate. Your heart is going to explode from fright. <laughs> See how much how much better is that now? <laughs> Nah, loss is better. My big complaint with that scene is he talks about how much the uh, plaster's burning her, and yet he's not wearing not gloves. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. like that, that. his hand should be on fire. Like he's like, it burns, doesn't it? And he just keeps rubbing it on there, but he's not wearing gloves. Suspension. No, really I, I changed my like, mind. This movie sucks. <laughs> 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 So Scott said that, and you could literally hear Brian's heart explode. From fear. <laughs> That's not plaster I just put all over his face. Oh. <laughs> that uh, beat was keep perfect. It, oh my we, God. Keep a, we keep it real highbrow on this podcast. <laughs> oh, fucking shit. <laughs> Molly bumps into Slauson after being pursued by his brother holding a screaming woody head. Oh my hey, god, that you're... screaming head is great. Yeah. Ah! It is great. But she never ah! met <laughs> She never met Woody though. And she goes, Woody She never <laughs> met the guy. Well Holy she's shit. I get, okay, yeah. I take it all back. I take it all back <laughs> screenwriting all back. <laughs> so then Slauson's brother comes out and she shoots him with a shotgun that Slauson gave her. And then she discovers that the gun is full of blanks. The thing is, is I, that's the cool thing about that scene. I knew that you were going to say, like, oh, she she was stupid for not realizing us there are blanks. They looked like they were real to me, and he was acting like it, and he's like, you shot me with blanks. Yeah. And that, that delivery was awesome. I love that scene. But then she shatters the mask, and it turns out Slauson's brother is Slauson, <laughs> in case we didn't already spoil that. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, man. You, you, were, you were talking about um, fucking foreshadowing earlier. This is not foreshadowed. This is like the most obvious, most fucking upfront. Like the second I met Sloth and, and he said, "Oh, well, don't go outside. There's another guy out there. I'm like, oh, he's going to go do a quick wardrobe change. And just <laughs> become that other guy. Now. Like, what my biggest issue is with the reveal or the twist is um, if you watch the trailer for Tourist Trap, they have a scene where you see Slauson's face. As he sneaks up behind Molly in the lake, and I'm like, "Why would you? Why are you serious? Yeah, like oh why would God. you? Why would you put that in the trailer? Uh, well, it could have been a well, twin. I bro. don't think that it was they weren't really going way after the theatrical release, though. Yeah, probably they weren't really going for like a huge twist because because this quote unquote t- twist happens like a th- like one quarter of the way into the movie. Like, there's still so much fucking movie left after this happens. And uh, I'm so, so was, no. appreciative of that because this movie is awesome. It could be three hours long and I'd still love it. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is this is no happy birthday to me twist. Or anything oh, like man. That. I wish it was happy birthday to me. They were all wearing masks. Well, it actually does have a very weird happy birthday to me type ending, uh, twist ending, actually, that we'll get to shortly. So Becky and Jerry managed to escape the basement only for Becky to be killed by the mannequin of Old Chief Woodenhead. And uh, Molly goes to Jerry for help, and that's when she finds out that he's a mannequin. And, like, that, tw- that's, that to me is the fucking happy birthday to me twist of all twists, is when she's just chatting it up with Jerry, and then Slauson takes off his arm. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, he's a mannequin. I'm, I don't know how you didn't know that already. <laughs> like, like, yeah, the character looks surprised, too. Like, yeah. he stares at his missing arm, and he's like, huh? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> The last, like, ten minutes of this movie is, like, definitely someone's like, let's do this. And they're like, well, how did that happen? It's like, I don't fucking know. Just put it in the script. It's we cool. got this far. They're <laughs> still watching. Let's do it. Yeah, but then Slauson uh, starts dancing with the mannequin of his wife, who begins to turn into a real person, and then he gets axed in the neck. And uh, the movie ends with some creepy music and Molly driving with all of the mannequins of her friends in the car with, like, a really freaky smile on her face. I love the final shot of this movie. Yeah, me too. Yeah, hey, great. also, I, I, Adam, um, I know that you have been upset about Matt's Philly accent, but right now we can be very appreciative of the fact that he said axed when he actually meant axed instead of asked. <laughs> yeah, he, he he made sure to make a specific newt about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I didn't realize we were talking about uh, Alien 2. Aliens. I wish that was the full name. <laughs> Alien 2 Aliens. Shut up! <laughs> 
Alien 2. More alien <laughs> We got the uh, aliens and the the Draculas. The, the, the Spider-Man. Let me uh let me get my mannequin guy in here. Hey, <laughs> hey, mannequin guy, is this movie uh realistic with the mannequins that move? Yeah, yeah. It's fucking perfect. Yeah, it's what we do at the end of the movie. That guy doesn't even fucking know he's a mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I so feel like Brian like walked into this this crazy thing he never realized it's like. Yeah, have you listened to us recently? We are all on coke. It's insane. Oh, I listen to every episode. Oh, Brian, boy. you need to score any. I got a guy. They do. I got, I got a coke up. guy. Let me, let me call my coke guy. So, Brian, let's talk about why you picked this particular movie, because it actually ties in to the Kickstarter that you have. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're on to that point, I guess. Yeah, let's go to that point. Why not? Uh, we're we're right, there cool. now. For those who might not know... Um, me and a couple friends made a movie not too long You're ago called shit. Jennifer Help Us. Yes. Jennifer Help Us. And you can actually watch it for free at JenniferHelpUs.com. Somebody's uh, got right to that, uh, that, that website cost. <laughs> yeah, someone's got to pay for that. And then, <laughs> not me, but somebody. And then, um, yeah, so we're trying to make a sequel right now. And Matt's actually kind of read like an early draft. Um, it's basically completely different from the first movie. But still, kind of ties into it, and yeah. we're kind of taking a mannequin-y approach to it. Yeah, you uh, you actually you described it really well because you said it's basically tourist trap meets prom night two. Hello, Mary Lou, because it has you do not need to see the first Jennifer help us to watch right. Jennifer help us too. Still has fun tie tie-ins for people who did see the first one and enjoyed it. So. Exactly, but yeah, yeah. It, it definitely involves a group of teenagers stuck in a in a factory filled with mannequins. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, I am rock hard right now. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm yeah. so ready for this. That's his two. That's like two of Scott's favorite movies: is Prom Night Two <laughs> and Torch yeah, Trap. Don't give it away. <laughs> I said hello, Mary <laughs> So you have this Kickstarter going, and it's what are you? How much are you trying to raise? Uh, we're shooting for ten thousand. Okay, we made the first movie for less than a thousand. <laughs> Well, hey, why don't you explain to the listeners who probably don't know about Jennifer Help Us a little bit about the movie and what where you were coming from with it. Yeah, Jennifer Help Us, we were just kind of at a place in our lives where we were kind of sick of just talking about making movies, and we just thought it was kind of time to nut up or shut up. So, um, yeah, the only camera we had was a phone. So we decided to shoot something in the late 70s because we knew we were going to have quality loss. Uh, when we, you know, when we got bigger with it. So uh, we, we shot a period type thing around 1978, 1979, and we had a really cool looking killer. I think that's our big claim to fame. <laughs> the story. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a story of a haunted house, you know, supposed haunted house and some teenage girls who lock another teenage girl in there for the weekend. And uh, basically the girl from the original story, why the house has a stigma to it, she comes back and doesn't know that there's a teenage girl tied up in her house. It just It's only like 75 minutes. You could just watch it. You know, I don't mind if you give up on it 10 minutes in. You'll know if you're into it. Don't point. listen. Don't sell yourself short, bro. Well, I think, I think the thing I always tell people is you'll know pretty much – right into the first like five or six minutes of the movie if it's going to be a movie that you're going to enjoy or not enjoy because for me like i popped that into my dvd player you had sent me a, a copy of the dvd right after you'd done the saint mort show and right. like the very first scene as soon as the all like casio tone keyboard soundtrack came in i was like oh yeah no this is definitely a solid 70s homage <laughs> And then you just have like the grainy shot of a car driving over the camera, and I'm like, "Yep, nope, this is definitely a late '70s tribute <laughs> film." Uh, and I was like, all on board right then and there because just the the elements, the elements are already set in place where as soon as you start watching the movie, you know that this is made by someone who loves those '70s films. And then I'm more excited for the sequel because I don't love '70s films, but I appreciate them. But this the the sequel was an, an '80s homage. Yes. Which is easily the best decade of horror movies. <laughs> yeah. And you, you provided me with the brilliant idea. If we do a third one, just hop forward into the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> <To> <laughs> 90s horror movies. So, um, no, I'm really looking forward to it if we get it off the ground, that is. Uh, yeah. I think right now we're just over 10%. We got 20 days left. So, um, oh, yeah, you're we'll right see. on target. Yeah, you'll be. Oh, right on target. 
And I mean, just keep in mind when you get to part four, it has to be in space. Like that's like a rule too. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> hey, Hellraiser, it hello. For, it, it worked for Hellraiser and it Leprechaun. <laughs> My favorite Hellraiser. We can have that discussion some other time. Though. I know you guys are going to complain <laughs> that the, it's not one, Hell on Earth the one part both three. Set in the distant future and the 1700s. <laughs> yeah. <That's> yes. <laughs> That's my favorite. Does that not surprise you? Is it because of Adam Scott? What? Adam Scott's in that one. No. Yes, he is, motherfucker. Really? It has been a long time since <laughs> I've seen it, so wow. I am in shock. <laughs> I think I think that's what I feel right now. I'm, I'm not positive, though. Where can people go to donate to this Kickstarter? Well, kickstarter.com. And as of now, the working title for the movie is Jennifer Help Us 2 with T-O-O. Um, <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you call it Jennifer Help Us, Jennifer Help Us, uh, uh, more helping us? And I, was trying to, I, was trying to, I was trying to help I was trying to make a joke about the aliens thing that we did earlier, but it doesn't work when there's so many goddamn words in the title. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of words. Quick question. Can yeah. you change the title to Jennifer Help Us, but instead of a J, have a two? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Now we should just put a two right in the middle, like just, the U and hell or the E and help. Brian, at the end of the show, as you know, we always talk about what do we watch this week. Uh, besides watching this, is there anything else that you watched this week? I finally saw Southbound. Okay, how was that? Um, it was serviceable. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice thing I can say about it. <laughs> no, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't discourage people from watching it. Personally, I'm a really big fan of mythology movies. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it was serviceable. I, I think I went in a little bit too hyped, probably. So uh, go in with no expectations, and I think you'll have a pretty good time. All right. Good to know. Go in, get, get ready to be disappointed, and you'll have a good time. <laughs> I also saw Turbo Kid, which I thought was I thought it was sweet. It was actually a pretty sweet movie, and I mean that in kind of a cutesy way. Not like, yeah. oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Midnight Madness. It's an older movie. I Is that the one know. where it's like, um, it's almost like it's not- Rat Race? <laughs> like, yes. Okay. Yeah, I have seen that. A young Michael J. Fox and uh, Eddie Deason, I think, is in that too. Yeah, yeah. The American Werewolf's in there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, that was that was a joy. I, I like those point A, point B type movies anyway. Uh, Rat Race, I think, is one of the funnier movies out there. So uh, Midnight did Madness. Midnight Madness yeah. have, uh, did it have Smash Mouth in it? <laughs> no, no. So it, it is a little less. Uh, it's not as good as Rat. Not as it's, good. Right. <laughs> hey, now you're an all star, dude. They that band never needed to release another album after All Star was in every goddamn movie for like seven years. Did you, hear, did you hear about how, like, not even that long ago, they went to some sort of festival and uh, at some booth? Told, they they were like, the people were throwing well, bread they, at them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so Booth was giving away free bread, so they just got pelted with buns at this festival. (laughs) Well, no, here's the best part about that video, because you can watch the video online. The dude from Smash Mouth loses his fucking mind and starts screaming at the crowd, where he's like, listen, man, we're playing this festival for you, you're throwing goddamn bread at us. And he's like all fired up and angry. But the best part is that this happened during the song All Star, and the band hasn't stopped playing, so he's like screaming, and in the background, he's like, (laughs) dent. (laughs) <laughs> like, it's like, like, oh, it's so fucking funny. Uh, so I watched two movies this week. Uh, I hinted at one of them earlier uh, last week when I talked about how I watched two movies that our horror fucking loves and I thought was various levels of okay. Uh, I watched Contract It. Ugh. Yeah, I thought it was better than Creep, which I didn't I like it. very much. But I, I didn't think it was bad, but it's definitely nothing that I would ever watch again uh i i saw it and it i mean it, it was it was what it was um that's that one that i'm always seeing on netflix and the poster is like that woman's face with all the black shit all over it yeah it's basically it's it's a better std horror film than it follows but again i was not a big fan of it follows either so it, it's just it's just okay now for some really top quality shit i also watched <laughs> the rebirth of mothra from 1996 and i i in the last like year i've gotten really really into kaiju movies and mothra is always just next level batshit crazy so that so- was fun 
We've never discussed it. And I, I feel like now is the time to ask you this question. What are your thoughts on Pacific Rim then? I enjoy it. I liked it more than the Godzilla remake, but both of them aren't like things that I immediately want to pop in. Uh, I want it. I, I want it. Pacific Rim to be amazing, and it was just good. Like <laughs> I guess is how I, I felt. Fair enough. Yeah. I feel like every part of Pacific Rim that wasn't monsters and robots fighting could have been cut, and I, I would have enjoyed the movie more. All right, so Adam or Scott, what did you guys watch this week? Um, Adam probably has something funny. I don't think I have any comedic relief for these two boring films that I watched. Um, and I, I, I really – I watched one of them before last week's discussion, but I saved it to mention here because they're both foreign films. I watched Goodnight Mommy a couple weeks ago, and I hated Boo. it. Boo, I that fucking it. movie. People love that movie. Why? It, that movie <laughs> sucks. Like, I saw the twist coming probably ten minutes in when she's not – okay, um, can I spoil it? I, no. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. No. Okay, uh, <laughs> God, it's – I saw the twist, like, early, early on. And so it was just excruciating. Not to mention, like, the mom is an idiot for, like, the stuff she does. Um, and also, you don't like the mom because she does a lot of really bad stuff. Like, you're supposed to empathize with somebody in this film, I think, but nobody's likable. Everybody sucks. And there are only three or five people that show up in the entire film. Anyway, um, so that was crap, and I was really disappointed. That was one of the bigger disappointments of the last month or so, movie-wise. I mean, I'm not talking about my sex life. Uh, and then yeah, I that's, last... that's a pretty steady level of disappointment. <laughs> you're never really surprised there. No, no, I'm not disappointed. I'm disappointing. Uh, anyway, so, so I... Uh, uh, last night I fell asleep watching When Animals Dream. I think it's called. It's a uh, werewolf flick that's on Netflix, and it's Danish, I believe. I watched it with the subtitles on and the sound off because my wife was sleeping, uh, and so I was just like, mm, "I'll give it a shot." I, I think I made it about halfway, and then she starts turning into a werewolf, and I'm just like, eh. "So yeah, I, I don't know if I'll finish it, but." I don't have high expectations or high hopes. I don't have high expectations that I'll ever get back to it because it was a snoozer. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't really have a very good week. Aside from watching Tourist Trap again, which was awesome. Well, like, we, can, we, we can both talk about this, Scott, because we saw Deadpool. Oh, yeah. I forgot that I watched that. I was thinking about, like, horror movies. But, yes, uh, yeah, Deadpool was killer, wasn't it? Let's, let's commiserate. Yeah, I, I, I really, really loved it when I saw it in theaters. And the farther away I get from my first viewing of it, the more I realize that I'm totally going to forget about that movie. I'm just going to forget about it. Like, it's not, it's not something that's going to really, you know, heavily stick with me. Like, I loved it. It was great. And I suggest that people watch it because it is just, like, gory, action-packed fun, but, um, like, the further and further I get away from it, I can't even think about any of, like, what his one-liners were. Oh, like, I can't remember all it's, his one-liners. <laughs> uh, it's it's starting the, to fade. Go ahead. I think that, I get what you're saying, but I respectfully disagree slightly. I think that it is f still fun and, and, like, valid, and, you know, like, it's, it's, it's a good watch. Um, I, I think that you have a point that it's like I think that the hype is a little bit bigger than the than than what it is. Maybe I don't. Maybe that's not the right way to pr pr to explain it. But uh, yeah, I'm just like I, I felt myself laughing at some things because I felt I should. But there are some really really funny scenes i respect it for being an r-rated marvel cinematic universe film because that's something that when you think back on it it's it everybody you know talks about how bad deadpool was in the wolverine origins Excellent that was origins, a fox yeah. yeah that was a fox film so this is actually a marvel property or i mean or it's it's like they got the rights to do this film which is cool because they also got the rights to have x-men in a marvel movie and they got the, the rights to say mutants, which was a big no-go for a really long time. And that's why they're making the Inhumans movie. And that's why there are Inhumans and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so it, it's like it's really cool because it kind of bridges the, the Brian Singer Fox X-Men movies with what Marvel Cinematic Universe is doing. Now, I think Deadpool really should never be in 
like a significant amount of films. Like if they do a Deadpool two with Cable, that would be great because Deadpool needs to be more like the um, Kurt Russell in Big Trouble in Little China. Like you know, it's not about him. Cable's got the one who's got the he's the one who has the character arc and he's the one who's pushing the story forward. And Deadpool, but Deadpool is the focus of the film because he's funny. But I mean, here's I think that this I think Deadpool's good. Like I thought Ant Man was good. I think that they are fun and funny and they're entertainment, but I don't think that they really should significantly impact the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm happy with it, but I just don't think that it needs to be like that big. So many people are around me are saying like, yeah, it was awesome. It's an R-rated movie and I was so happy to see them go like full tilt with it and do all this crazy stuff. I can't wait to see him show up in like the X-Men movies or like with Spider-Man or something like that. And I'm like, you're going to you're, you're asking for him to be fucking neutered again. You're asking them like because those are always going to be PG-13 movies. Absolutely. And saying, well, why does way too much money built into those for them to be hard R films. Exactly. So why are you asking for them to shop him around and be in these other movies? Because it's not going to be the same character or doing the same things that you saw in this movie. So stop wishing that upon upon this property, like fucking cut it out. But I'm not I'm not trying to detract away from the like how good the movie was or the importance of the movie. I'm just saying that it's really fading fast on me. Like it's already starting to fade. Well, okay? it's it, a popcorn flick. It really is. I think I, I think it's no, like I agree. It, it shouldn't I agree. be like. A movie that people just fucking circle jerk about for weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, it was fun, but I'm not gonna go around quoting Deadpool. You yeah, know, nobody should circle jerk about Deadpool. Unlike Tourist Trap, yeah, I don't fuck. Yes, well, <laughs> give it 25 years. <laughs> I'm and then a, a, a room full of dumbasses will be talking about Deadpool. The same way we talked about <laughs> Tourist Trap. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, guys, that's voice of reason. Uh, well, did you ever really think sad. you would live to see the day where a superhero movie where the hero got pegged? I mean, come on, dude, that was the best part of the movie. <laughs> yeah. That is hilarious. That part was that part, and the part when he um is like he's intimidating the pizza guy, and he's like, "If you do, I'll come back and I will fuck you." And he's like, "Wait, <laughs> that came out did wrong." I mean to say that? <laughs> yeah, then he kisses him on the cheek. Those are the two funniest parts of that film, and I think that those are the two parts that like. A lot of people that went to see Deadpool hate. <laughs> you know, they're like, uh, gay jokes, uh. <laughs> you know, I thought that those were great. That's not saying anything about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting a little more college scotch shining through again. Okay. <laughs> That was Tourist Trap from 1979. Uh, we were joined again by Brian Berger. Thank you for joining us. Uh, definitely go and check out Jennifer Help Us 2 and donate to that Kickstarter. Go to JenniferHelpUs.com and you can watch the first movie as well. Uh, it's definitely worth the 75 minutes of your time to check it out. Don't forget. See, if you're going to watch a Charles Band film. Yeah. <laughs> it's 80 minutes. <laughs> it's 70 minutes. I'm sorry. You can watch 75 minutes of Brian Berger's film. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> this movie was also picked by Brian. The tourist trap was picked by Brian through emails. So you can always email us at hmnpodcast at gmail.com. Way bigger pick, uh, way better pick than Brian's previous pick of Monster High. Oh, come <laughs> on. That was you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that was me. Oh, Brian. That was Brian. probably your guys' shortest episode. You barely even scratched the surface on that movie, okay? <laughs> That's because yeah, one of us right. didn't watch it. I. You, I dodged you the talk more bullet, about the movie. You actually watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that movie sucked. I just want to reiterate how bad that movie was. It was bad. I'll admit that. I'll admit that. But it seems like you talked more about it in following episodes than you did in the actual episode. <laughs> That's probably true. You did well, not bring up the computer-headed about. basketball player until like previous <laughs> later episodes. So. Uh, sorry, sorry. Have you ever listened to us talk about Mole Man of Belmont Avenue? It could have been worse, man. Don't even Dude, worry that episode's me. like five minutes long. <laughs> I think that we spent most of that talking about the song. Yeah. I really, uh, that, that's it. All right. Yep. Well, shoot us some emails at hmmpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week.
Okay, so side so side note is we're talking about stupid titles for things like adding a two in the middle of the word Jennifer. Um, I was on a long car ride with a group of friends yesterday. We drove two hours to see uh, a wrestling show. But during the ride, uh, I just had my iPod of all 90s music on, and Korn came on, and the one dude in the back seat uh, was like, dude, that reminds me, I formed a band when I was in high school called Peas, and it was spelled P-E, anarchy symbol, and a backward Z. Wow. <laughs> uh, so just quick shout out to my buddy Clor for that fucking brilliant band name when he was a kid. Why didn't he just name him the band Clor? Because that's a much better band name. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you make the E and P's a fucking three? You should have made it the number two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dogs agree with dogs, love it. dogs are all about it right now. Um, Are you guys talking about peas and corn in here? <laughs> 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 You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 